One of the issues that uh, it isn't much touched on in actual fact in the 12 things the National Party said it repeal reverse as scrap is crime. A law and order, particularly in the, well, probably Taupo North has become a significant election issue and it was a major issue, for example, uh, during the Auckland mayoral issue. Um, as Ram Raiders, uh, we're almost, we're over 200 now, um, and young people uh, took offence. The latest outrage, uh, according to uh, the mainstream media, is um, of joyriding youngsters uh, on their way to or from Ram Raids now opening their car doors as they pass cyclists uh, and therefore causing grief, uh, rage and injury uh, to those individuals. Um, and certainly missing out from a lot of this is that there appears to be nothing uh, that the government can um, or even should do from their point of view to look at youth crime. Uh, they say we're going to attack the causes but at the end of the day the crime still continues uh, and that crime continues to a degree that many people now feel uncomfortable and unsafe and that that issue has permeated through the community to a big degree. Expect law and order to be a massive issue at the next election uh, along with the cost of living. But um, in the context of that, uh, you remember on Tuesday I was talking about um, uh, that there's a new campaign that's been launched by Crime Stoppers to ring them um, when these sorts of things occur and that particularly Farno that was aimed at. So I guess if somebody in the family was committing crime, they wanted you to be able to ring them. And I can remember saying to you, why would you ring Crime Stoppers and not talk to the police? Um, well, to answer that question, talk about their campaign and give us some insight into what they actually do, we're joined by the Chief Executive of Crime Stoppers, Hayden Smith. Hayden, good morning. To, oh, it's good, good afternoon to you. <laughs> good afternoon, Michael. Um, I'm, I, I was explaining to listeners on Tuesday that when I was the Mayor of Whanganui, my Chief Executive introduced somebody who said he was from Crime Stoppers, so it must have been... Oh, 2000, somewhere between 2004 to 2010, and that they were running a campaign, and it must have been almost when you started, was it, Crime Stoppers, around about the start of the century? Yeah, two, yeah 2009 uh, Crime Stoppers started, and that gentleman would probably have been John Perham. Yes, I think I it would was. Have thought. Yes, it was. Yep. 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 Um, yep. And he was, what, was he the original founder or something of that? Yes, he was one of the founding, um, he was original chair and became the uh, executive director. He, he retired in 2019, so uh, just just the, the week that I started, actually. Okay. So, in 2018, sorry, yep. Now, the thing I don't get about Crime Stoppers is that I often see you at the bottom of news media stories, you know, Crime Stoppers and things like that, and I'm thinking, why would I ring you and not ring the police? So, could you explain what you do and why I'd ring you and not the police if I saw a crime being committed? Well, basically, it's, it's to give people alternatives. So it, it, it's really to assist those who, for, for whatever reason, don't feel they can ring the, ring the police. For example, it could be that your partner is a gang member. It could be that your brother is involved in organised crime. It could be that your sister is involved in, in putting together a methamphetamine lab. So for whatever reason, you don't want anyone to know who you are, but you want to do the right thing. You, you still want the police to have that inf information. Now, it's not evidential because no, no one's going to stand up in court, but it gives the police a steer as to who may be doing something, uh, who may be involved. And, and in the case of youth, it gives a chance for the cycle to be broken because once these kids step over that line and start enjoying being over that line and they get into the justice system or whatever, this it's a hard thing to turn that around. And what we're saying is this is an opportunity for people who... who a lot of people sort of say, hey, um, why would you dob anyone in? Why would you do that? And, and gangs and, and certain, certain members of society always say that. That's the worst thing. In fact, it's the very best thing to do. Um, if, if, the, if no one called the police because really you're dobbing everyone in, the police wouldn't be able to do anything. The police alone could not respond. So this just gives people an alternative uh, number to call. We are not the police. We are totally independent. Uh, our funding comes from a number of sources, uh, but we are not 
controlled or, or led by the police in what we do. All we do is facilitate and make sure that someone who wants to be anonymous is anonymous and we pass the information on. Okay. Um, I'm thinking instantly that if I wanted to be mischievous um, as well, I'd call you um, and not have my fingers on it. Um, I'm thinking particularly of family court cases, to be honest with you. But um, Oh, look, that, that, that thing does happen, Michael. Yeah. Yep. And, and look, it's, it's, it's for the, the police themselves to assess the, the uh, credibility of the story that comes through because, again, it's not evidential. So you might say... John Smith is a terrible person, he's done blah, blah, blah. That doesn't mean that the police can act on that. So what they might do is say, right, someone's saying there's a P-Lab at this house, let's watch it for a week and see what happens. And, and so it leads them in a direction, it doesn't necessarily lead to an outcome. It's, it's intelligence, it's what you do with that intelligence, but you've always got to remember it is anonymous. And, and to be fair, about... about well, between 10 and 20% of people do actually name themselves after they've been speaking to an agent for for 10 minutes or so. Mm. But, um, so I uh, so I still don't... So I come to you, because I... <coughs> pardon me. Sorry, a frog in my throat, which is the wrong place to have one. Um, I come to you if yep. um, I see a, or suspect a crime is being committed because I don't want to talk to the police because I might be on the wrong side of the police already, or because there is the possibility that I could be identified as the source of that information. Is that correct? That's right. And, and look, you may be, for example, you might be a family man walking down the street and you see a dairy being robbed. You take a photograph of the car as they drive off <coughs> and you say, well, I know they were gang members. Do I really want to get involved? So you have the option of phoning the police, and most people do, or you can say, right, I've got a photograph of the car that was used. I'll upload that on to, under crimestoppers-nz.org, and then the police have it, and I've done the right thing, and I don't have to go to court. I'm out of here. That's the sort of option that you're saying that a lot of people won't necessarily put their hand up, um, in that, even though we all like to think we would, but when you're confronted with the dark side of crime, uh, it, it's it's not so easy for you to say, right, I'm going to put my whole family at risk by doing this. And so what we're saying is feed the information through. At least the police are aware that instead of looking for a white Toyota, they're looking for a specific registration number. And it, it saves everybody a lot of time. Mm. Um, I guess the frustration, though, if I was a policeman, is you're providing me this information. But in many cases, if I'm going to court, as you so rightly say, I'm going to need what, more information or I'm going to need somebody to be a witness or something like that. How do the police oh, that's regard right. your that, operation? Well, it, it builds a case. It doesn't, it's not the case. So it's like everything. Uh, in every police uh, case, you'll have some people's evidence that's hearsay. You'll have other people's evidence which is unreliable. So the police try and put the best case forward. So the best case will not be anonymous information from Crime Stoppers, mm. but it may well lead to a, a warrant uh, being obtained. It may well lead to observations on an area that does lead to good evidence and does lead to them catching uh, the criminal red-handed or whatever. It, it certainly opens doors, and then the police have to establish a prima facie case and they have to get their evidence together in order to convince a jury that this evidence does stack up. The Crime Stoppers evidence will, prob will probably initiate a methamphetamine bust or um, a, a homicide or whatever, but it certainly will not be the foundations for a conviction. Okay. What are the cases, so as a percentage of cases that you do, and I'm sure you do these stats as you report to your board and things yeah. like that, What's the most common couple of cases or types of criminal activity that people contact you over? Drugs. Oh. Drugs are, are around about, or, or drug-related is around about 60% um, of all files we get. Yeah. Um, things have diversified a bit, though. I, I recall that uh, prior to uh, the Christchurch terror attack, we never had a report of a terror incident. Um, and, and we, we analyse our stats every month 
since the Christchurch terror, t- terror attack, we have not had a month where we haven't had a terror attack incident reported through Crime Stoppers. So it, it just shows you that uh, it, it's also whatever's to the fore. So if if something like ram raids uh, is on the front page of every newspaper, then it does then become uh, an incident that uh, we see more of coming through our our system. Well, take me to the um, terror attack issue because uh, there has now been suggestion over the weekend, I've just talked about it, incels being, uh, you've probably heard that word, um, being mm. single young men unable to have sex with women um, but as turning into potential terrorists. Um, is that the kind of incident you're suggesting or is it something a bit more ISIS related? Well, look, it's at every level. The, the, the police make the final assessment and they they work with the likes of the SIS and, and, and everything else. So we, we basically facilitate and, and certainly we don't uh, get involved in the investigation side of it. We simply have headings. So when you come in and make a report, you'll pick on the heading that you want to have. And we don't have the details. Even, even the details, we don't even pass on to the police the gender of the person that's reporting. And the reason we don't do that is depending on the circumstances, if you're a male or a female, it may identify you. Um, and, and unless you knowingly wish to be identified, we we go out of our way to make sure there's nothing such as an email address, a cell phone number or an address that would suggest who the person ringing, ringing in or, or reporting on the website is. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, that's fair enough. Um, I guess the next question is, well, I'm asking the wrong person. We're going to have to ask it anyhow. Nobody else is going to tell me. The police won't. Um, what do you, how do you assess your effectiveness? Well, it's, it's very difficult for us to assess our effectiveness. And the, 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 because we're anonymous, that's, that's why it is. So we, we send through uh, a lot of information to the police. But as, as every good detective will tell you, um, it may have initiated with a Crime Stoppers report, but it would be good detective work that resulted in an arrest. Mm. So it's very hard for us to say what level of success we have. What I what I do say is we we do a lot of work around the quality of the reports and making sure that we you know we we always have the I know school holiday rushes where everyone hears about the number 0800 555 111 and they start ringing into us and and stuff like that. Um, and, and we're very aware of because internally we can see a lot. So we see where uh, people are ringing us on a very, very regular basis. We had someone ring us 180 times one month and, and we can put in things like blocks. Even in the internet uh, space on the website, which is mobile friendly, if we get so many um, internet uh, lodgements from a particular IP within a certain period of time, we block that as well. Yeah. Because what we find is uh, once someone thinks they're having a lot of fun, um, we look at what's the outcome of it, whether there's reports or whether it's just hang-ups, whether it's just uh, abuse of agents, um, that type of thing. And then we take steps to make sure that that person can't ring us. They can still ring the police, so if they are really in trouble, the, it doesn't stop the 111 system and no. it doesn't stop the 10-5 yeah. um, uh, system working. Uh, but what it means is, is um, we'll only take so much before um, we have to draw the line somewhere too and usually it's around people that are just got nothing to do on a Saturday night or or whatever but I'd have to say that is the majority Michael a minority I would I would have to say most people when they do call in um, uh, have have thought it through um, are quite serious about what they're calling about and uh, they they usually have a very succinct message to say uh, sometimes they, they say it quicker than we'd like them to because they sort of obviously build up to it and all of a sudden we get a, a, a 60 second diatribe of, of what they know and then they hang up which makes it very hard because our agents can cannot ask questions or can't really um, establish what city in New Zealand this particular event occurred or or similar and we get that sort of thing all the time and that, but that's just the nature of, of our call and sometimes people call back we've even had people call back and apologise for abusing the agent uh, on the first occasion so we have some interesting stuff that comes through, but I'd have to say that 90% of the people that call us are trying to do the right thing and are quite serious. And like recently with a, a terror attack report, 
uh, we have a group group of um, journalists who are uh, they they call Paparo, I think it is, and they they basically surf the dark web. And if they see anything really um, untoward, they report it through Crime Stoppers. And that way, they're twice removed from the police. The police don't know who they are, and basically, they have a way of getting the information to the police immediately without any um, delay to that scenario. And that was a, a second incident in Christchurch that was a terror attack that came out of that particular group using our services. Um, did you find during the COVID lockdown and uh, consequent uh, mandating and debates and discussions like that, people ringing up to Dobbin, people who weren't, they think, complying with the mandates, etc.? Yes, we did. We, we had um, a huge amount. In fact, our, our figures were distorted during all the lockdown months by uh, roughly about 30%. So wow. we had an increased period of time. And we used to, we, we got the overflow quite a bit as well, where the police were quite inundated. And if people couldn't get through the police, they sort of came through to us, So, or the Ministry of Health. Um, so, yes, we did get quite a bit uh, during that time, and uh, we were happy to be um, the overflow, f- uh, for want of a better word. And a lot of people during that period uh, actually identified themselves. They weren't um, that concerned. They were simply saying that... Um, someone was breaching the protocol and um, and that information went through to the police and Ministry of Health. But it was, uh, yeah, there was an increase during that, uh, over the COVID um, lo- lockdown periods especially. Can I give an example? Uh, say at the time that masks were, um, you know, compulsory hidden in places like supermarkets, for example, and somebody wasn't yep. wearing a mask at a supermarket, would they then ring Crime Stoppers to report that sort of thing to you? Well, some people did. Um, and, and basically that goes straight to the Ministry of Health and straight to the police at that particular time. So they would put it on the level of seriousness that they had the ability to attend. I guess it would um, be not serious at really, all, would it? Well, I'd, it's for them to decide. We we don't make any... Um, no, I understand I suppose, that. But you a, must know... Yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying, Hayden, but you must know the police must have said to you, oh, mate, <laughs> we don't need these. Uh, do they say that... Do you have those <laughs> sorts of discussions? No, not at all. That they would rather people. It's a bit like a, a, an old lady ringing up, um, or not ringing up the police because she doesn't want to disturb anyone. And yeah. That's a common thing. Yeah. Or take the opposite. Um, I think the police would rather get the report and not have to uh, roll out the armed offenders squad than not get the report and then find they've uh, it's turned into quite a serious incident and someone has. Um, done or, or gone too far uh, or over the edge on, on in a particular scenario. So we, we, we fought forward everything and the police basically make this assessment on the viability or the veracity of it. Mm. And just bear in mind, that the, the people that I interact with at the police are at the higher level. Um, this stuff goes around to every region throughout the country. So I, I wouldn't know who receives it in Dunedin and Macargill Bluff, um, Wanaka, um, you know, Whangarei, it, it, because it, gets, it goes into the uh, police comm centre and they distribute regionally because we don't know, uh, one of the things we don't, aren't aware of, because we don't take any addresses down, the information goes through and it's only in the uh, body of the text that will say there's a person in um, Whangarei doing um, ABC. Um, we we don't know those addresses or where it's come from. The Are you mostly staffed um, by out. volunteers, Hayden? You'd have to be, wouldn't you? No, no. We uh, we have we run a uh, comm centre in Onihanga. Yeah. And uh, they all paid staff. Wow. And uh, but we get seventy percent of all our reports come through our website. Right. So the the greatest cost is is obviously the um, comm centre, and that costs us around. 200k a year to to uh, operate 24 hours 365 days a year i was just going to ask you uh, what your budget we, is a year uh we're getting up around uh almost a million now yeah, yeah. um but it's it's look everything uh, i don't care what part of the um charities charitable sector you are everyone's got spiraling costs uh, we got notifications the other day that they are our fees were going up by whatever percent, and it's just the reality of life. And somehow we 
we keep our our, our foot forward and uh, we we seem to come out the end every year with a combination of donations and payments that keep us running but it's we are a charity and um you know we we, we get uh, about um I don't know, up to about 50 to 100k worth of straight donations that that really do tip the balance every year that's basically our, our operating surplus is whatever we get donated basically uh, keeps us uh, in the in the black. All right. Um, and finally, um, I guess, I, said, I introduced this by saying that there is a perception uh, that there has been a plethora or a, that the fe- people are feeling more insecure as a, co- cons- a result of, of law and order reporting, whether it's happening to them or they're simply viewing it um, through mainstream media. The number of calls that you get, is that an accurate gauge of criminal activity in the wider community? Well, the, the thing is, we've been doing quite a bit over the last three years to diminish the calls we get, uh, mainly because we've bought a mobile-friendly website and we're blocking uh, what I call the the um, nuisance calls. Mm. So our, our calls have gone down. Uh, but the the quality of what's coming through has gone up, for want of a better word. So, and that's one thing I want to say before I leave too is make sure 0800 555 111 is the 0800 number, and the website is crimestoppers-nz.org. And the good thing about the website is you can attach files. So if you if you've got a photograph, an email, a PDF anything like that, uh, you can go on the website and you can attach it. So it certainly makes it easier for that information to flow directly through to the police. Uh, 0800 555 is that right? That's the one. God, I wish we had that number here. That's a bloody good number. Um, thank you very much for joining <laughs> us, uh, Hayden, and for explaining that to me. I feel better educated now and I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Okay. All right. So that's Hayden Smith. He's the Chief Executive of Crime Stoppers. Every question you always wanted to ask about what they do has been answered, I think.